When making purchasing decisions in your Amazon FBA business, if you do online arbitrage, I always say that when you actually decide that you are going to buy a product, you should have a range in which you expect your product to sell, right? A minimum price, like worst case scenario, where's the, what's the minimum price is going to be and what is the maximum price going to look like, right? Um, so we had, I had a question from Italo, who is a, a, an OG member of the, um, discord server and it was not on the discord server but also the channel and by the way if you don't know we have a discord server best place to learn about amazon best place to ask any questions you may have regarding selling on amazon and best place to network and meet other sellers but he asked a question and he was asking what was this minimum price looking at like what minimum price what percentage was i looking at uh, when it comes to return on investment for that specific minimum price right and so in today's video i'm going to talk a little bit about risk management and like how to assess if a lead is a great lead like how much risk you should take because it depends on the lead by lead basis um yes you guys know um still traveling it's still the same setup as yesterday because marsh had left a comment and i saw a few of you guys like liking this comment saying that you know this setup was nice with the birds chirping and stuff like it was looking like it was feeling more conversational right and it was like if we were having a conversation in the park or something so um if you guys like this setup let me know in the comments i'll keep recording here uh, if not you know i'll try to see around the house where i can record uh, because i do not have my setup with my big pc and stuff to um record with obvious i can still record stuff with my pc but like you know with my uh, laptop but like yeah if you guys like this setup uh let me know in the comments so we'll keep recording in this setup so as i said and i replied to this comment from italo so to 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 remind you a little bit so when you actually make a purchasing decision uh, when i make a purchasing decision i'm always looking at okay at what range am i going to be able to sell this product more than likely like if things go bad if the price tanks at what point or like what would be the lowest where i would be able to get an exit on that product right to not have to hold the product like if i need to exit it fast at what price can i exit this product and um so italo was asking like in most of the time what is my average return on investment right for for those products like for my minimum price and it depends and i'm going to explain to you exactly why so there are some products where um oh, there are some instances where you are going to take more risk you are going going to be willing to take more risk uh, on some products because um for example there are some products where you are going to want to be um, super safe and like you say okay this product worst case scenario um i see that the price can drop to um 20 dollars let's say and 20 dollars is going to be 15 percent return on investment so worst case scenario if i need to get out of this lead and because the price tanks and i need to get money fast i can probably do it at 15 percent return on investment right and you see that by analyzing the data on keepa so i have a whole video on looking at keepa so if you want to watch it click here uh, if i don't forget to put it if i forget remind me in the comments because i always forget but um yeah, by looking at the data on Keepa, you can pretty much have an estimate of like if the number of offers goes up like crazy, what will the price go down to? And um, as I said, it really depends on how much risk you want to take on a specific lead. And this will, um, you know, depend from supplier to supplier or from brand to brand, because you may have some knowledge about a specific supplier, about a specific brand. And um, this will in turn like change like it, it this will in turn like decide how much we, with that information you will decide how much risk you are willing to take with this product so as i said when i replied to the comments on some product my minimum price could be at a loss because i i, I may want to take some risk if there's a big upside if the price is on a price high and i do not often do it but like sometimes i say that uh, i see that okay i can see this product i can sell this product um at a great return on investment but if things go wrong i may have to liquidate at a loss uh, but it is not that likely that it happens but if it happens either i'm gonna hold my money or i'm gonna exit at minus five return on investment if i have to if i have to lose money it's fine but sometimes i may take risk like these for brands that i know uh, from for suppliers that i know and most of the time if you just hold um to your product if, if you know to keep graph makes sense and stuff you hold to your product you're gonna be fine you can hold to your products a little bit more and yeah i said it guys you're gonna have some noise when i record here um some chicken um but yeah 
you're going to see that way more often. Um, you're going to, like, depending on where you source that. But, like, I do not do this. Uh, like, if you hold to your products, you are going to be able to sell them back at break even or at a profit. But sometimes you may need to hold them um, for a little while. So, back back in the days, like back in the days, I'm talking like it was like months ago, but not too long ago, I was really holding to all my products because I knew that, you know, some places where I source, you see, um, you, you, you see the price tanking super fast and then the price recovering in one month, six weeks, sometimes two months, uh, and selling back at a price that is like, I had a super great return on investment. And what I'm trying to transition my business to is something where, um, you know, I, I the, the, and I talked about it in a previous video. Uh, I'm trying to transition to a business model where my average day in inventory gets shorter and shorter so I can compound my money way faster, even if I don't make as much return on investment on average per unit. Um, but like, it will depend uh, on all of that and you need to make your own decision and you need to have a strong, um, you need to understand like your they like your inventory turnover what inventory turnover you want to to get to because the inventory turnover we are in an inventory business and it's one of the most important kpi key performance indicator that you can look at in your business right um because you have an inventory like you, have, you you're running an inventory based business right so all that will change how you are looking at that specific minimum price and how much risk you are willing to take. All right, if you are on the shorter times, uh, on the shorter terms of things, um, like what I'm trying to get to, because I'm really trying to slash my average day in inventory. Um, if you want to get to that point, you are going to need to, um, yeah, have a strong liquidation, a strong liquidation, and be more strict with liquidation because you want to keep the ball rolling and you want to keep reinvesting your capital and have sales super fast, make money fast, and flip your money way more time per year than I am doing, like that I'm doing right now, right? So it will depend on all of that. Like, really try to look at what's the worst case scenario, like where the price could go if the price tanks. Because, like, most of the time, here's the thing, here's the truth. Most of the time, if you source the correct way, um, you are not gonna buy products where the, um, the price could go down. Like, the price is super, like, not stable at all. And the price is gonna go down to um, if you buy if you do not buy MSRP products because if if you remember what I said in previous videos, you are not supposed to buy um, product at MSRP products at full retails at full retail right. But um, yeah, if you are really um, trying to to do this the right way, um, this is this is all you would do it. You would buy product at like discounted product and like most of the time those products even if the price tank on amazon you are not gonna sell them at a loss they are gonna sell at msr like at break even and sometimes at a small loss like a few percentage points uh, you know on, on return on investment so most of the time it's gonna be fine but if you want to take more risk if you want to sell products that are on 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 um on a price hike and i i start to do it a little bit because i, I i've made videos um, in the past, in a few, like a few months ago, on uh, how to use skipper alerts and stuff, and like I'm starting to to play with um, to play with products like MSRP leads, like products that I buy at full retail, and you know because Amazon sellers have short memories, and like you would see like products that you can actually buy at MSRP, you would see the number of offers going up, going up, going up, the price tanking, and then you would see like the, the number of offers going down, like the price going up like crazy and still making sales. And people forget about that lead. And like, if you jump at the right time, you can make great money with leads such as these, right? So uh, I'm starting to play a little bit more with that. But um, like, as far as the minimum price is concerned, as I said, it really depends on your on your strategy. It really depends on um, the business model, and the business model is not really. But we could say the business model, like depending on how fast, like how, how many times you want to flip your inventory per year. Uh, if you want to be like, you can alter your product. It, it depends on a lot of things. But you need to think of like the the, the main way you are going to choose your minimum price when it comes to that price range when you are making your inventory choices is um, by basically this like deciding how much risk you want to take right and depending on that you're going to make your decision you're going to decide if that specific inventory that specific product makes sense for you in your specific um in your specific in your own 
um, how should I say that, with, with, with your own parameters, with how you run your business. Does this make sense? Is it too much risk? Does that fit what you are looking for in a product? And this is something that you would need to develop like as you sell. When you start selling, do not take too much risk. Like try to stick with products where you are still, especially if you do not have a lot of capital, try to stick with product where you are um, gonna make at least, if things go wrong, if you are gonna make at least like maybe 10% return on investment, 5% so that way you do not lose money. And even if your money is gonna compound a little bit slower, slower, it's gonna be a little bit more slowly. That way, um, your business, your money is still going to grow. Your capital is still going to grow. Because if you do not do that, if you, if when you start and you only have a few thousands of capital, you start doing this, it's going to be way more difficult for you. Because as big sellers, you know, as you grow, you are trying to. Uh, this is the problem that I'm trying to solve right now. You know, you are going to try to flip your inventory way more time per year. So um, that's where I'm at with my business. This is all you should think of it. Um, try to really define um, how much money you are willing to lose on the product because this is all this is this is what it is about like if things go wrong how much money are you willing to lose on the lead um, how much money are you willing to um, if you are not willing to lose money on the lead when you make a purchasing decision how much what is the minimum return on investment that you can expect like and you will build that experience all right you just need to start buying leads and you will build that experience all right so i hope this video was helpful i release a new video every single day join the discord server subscribe like this video do all that stuff uh watch these other videos on the screen if you want to keep learning about selling on amazon and i'll see you tomorrow for a new video thank you for watching